Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm going to be making mushroom arancini balls and it's also going to be paired with a pesto aioli. All the ingredients that you need are right here and they'll also be in the description box below. My friends always request that I make these and they are a hit. So I hope that your friends and your family enjoy them just as much as we do. So for ingredients today, we're going to be splitting it up into three different sections. The first section is going to be the risotto part of the dish. So if you just want to make the risotto, you can do that. And then the next part is going to be the arancini balls. For the arancini balls, we're going to be making a pesto aioli. Firstly, for the risotto, you're going to need one cup of arborio rice, one small onion, or you can use a couple of shallots if you'd like, two garlic cloves, and then half a bunch of parsley and one whole litre of chicken stock, or you can use beef stock, vegetable stock, whatever stock you want. 150 grams of risotto medley mushrooms. And then we're gonna be using about a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, half a cup of white wine. So for the next part, it's gonna be the arancini balls. What you're going to need is boccacini, and then you're going to need breadcrumbs, two eggs for that, and that is the arancini ball side. Of things. So for the pesto aioli, you're going to need about a cup of basil leaves, about two cloves of garlic, then you're going to need a lemon, Dijon mustard, and canola oil. So we're going to prepare for the risotto. Um, so we just need the mushrooms, the parsley, the onion, and the garlic. So I'm going to start with the onions and I'm just going to finely chop them. And so once I've chopped the onions, I usually just transfer them straight into the big pot that we need for the risotto. Next, we're going to be doing the garlic. This is how I peel and chop the garlic. I take off the end and then I just I squish it and it just kind of comes off. And because I've squished as well, it's super easy to then chop into little pieces. And next, we're just going to be doing the mushrooms. So just chop them up into small pieces. Once the mushrooms are all cut, you can put them back in the container that they came in. Next, we're just going to be cutting your parsley up into very fine pieces. I also throw in the stems, but you don't have to. Um, I just feel like they give a flavor that the leaves don't give. So I've added the one litre of chicken stock to the pot and we need it to be hot um, for when we're adding it into the risotto. So make sure that it's always staying hot. Once it kind of comes to the boil, then you can put it on a simmer and it'll stay hot. In your big pot with your onions and your garlic, you're going to add a little bit of olive oil. All right, so we're currently cooking the onions and the garlic. After we've cooked these, we're going to be adding the butter. And we just want 50 grams. I don't know if you guys knew, but it has it on the butter. All right, so once they've kind of gone to a clear consistency, we're going to add the butter. I'm going to let that melt. But we're also going to add in the mushrooms as well now. I'm going to cook them until they shrink. My stock has just come to a boil so just turn that down and let it simmer because we'll be adding it gradually to our risotto. Once these are basically cooked down we're going to add the rice and fry this until it's a little bit clear and translucent. 
Once this has been cooking for about two minutes, then you're going to add the wine, half a cup. So you want to cook out all the alcohol in this. It'll take about one minute for it to cook out. All right. So now that it's starting to sound like it's frying, we want to add in a ladle at a time chicken stock. All right, so when we've only got about one or two ladles left to put into the risotto, I'm going to add in my parsley. We're literally nearly finished now. Um, all of the stock has been put into the risotto and most of it has been absorbed. But we're just going to add in the Parmesan cheese. So once the Parmesan cheese is pretty much melted, you want to taste it for seasoning and add salt and pepper as you like. So your risotto is done when you can pull back your risotto and it slowly melts back in. So this part of the dish is finished. You can serve this as is or you can keep on watching and we'll make our own chili balls. So once your risotto is done, we want to place it on a big tray like this. This helps it to cool easier, but you can put it in like a bowl overnight, just as long as it's cool when you go to work with it. Um, but I usually put it on a tray like this and I put it in the fridge. So while our risotto is cooling down in the fridge, we're gonna start with our pesto aioli. Um, so you're going to need two egg yolks into something that this one will fit nicely into. I'm using something a bit bigger, um, but preferably something that is like thinner and it just fits into. So with the two egg yolks, I'm going to add in my minced garlic. Um, I did three cloves, but if you want to just put two cloves in, that's fine as well. And we're going to do half of a lemon, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, about a cup of basil leaves. So probably like half of a bunch. And then you want to put in one and a half cups of your canola oil. And from there, you just grab your little machine. You want to pulse it into like a mayonnaise kind of cloud starts coming from the bottom. So that's the end result for your pesto aioli. Hey guys, so it's the next day because yesterday I just got caught up doing other stuff, but my risotto has obviously cooled down and now we're going to make the iron chini balls. So um, you're just going to crack two eggs into the bowl and stir them up and then have some breadcrumbs in the other bowl. Um, I've got the cherry boccaccini, so it's a small boccaccini, but um, whichever one you have, just cut them into small pieces. I've just cut the cherry boccaccini in half, um, but if you have the bigger size, then cut them into quarters. And now we're going to make um, the arancini balls. I usually put gloves on for this because I find that it sticks to my hand a lot more than I would like it to. It's just a little bit messier when we do it with hot gloves. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to make them into balls. So you're going to flatten them out about the size that you kind of want. And then you're going to put the mozzarella inside the middle. And then you're just going to curve it all the way around so that mozzarella is sealed in there. And you've got a nice ball. So I'm just going to do all of them um, so that I don't have like egg on my hands and then breadcrumbs and everything. So just make the balls first and then you can dip them in. So I've got a new tray that I'm going to be putting the arancini balls on once they are coated and everything. You're just going to splash them in the egg and then 
into the breadcrumbs. We're going to bring the oil to temperature, just hot enough to fry. Drain off as much oil as you can. Thank you all so much for watching. I've like eaten half of an orange mini ball already and then I forgot I didn't do the outro. So here I am. <laughs> um, I hope that you all enjoy this recipe and I'll see you next time. Baby up with a slow motion crew And we up in a cloud